And I'm sitting there, and I'm casting with Dave. I'm kind of casting into Sobriety, kind of just relaxing. I didn't want to go up there. And, I, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I had this gut instinct that I needed to follow. Doug. The millennial generation is as follows. Welcome to... Surrounded by Idiot. Radio Podcast. Helping to make your life at least 1% better every single day. This is the Surrounded by Idiots Radio Podcast. Hey everybody, it's Tony Dufresne, PhD, back with you uh, on a small personal note to start the show off. I just bought a, an Amazon Alexa. I bought the little Echo Dot and uh, I'm really uh, interested. I, I really never wanted to uh, before just a few days ago, but I am I was just finished crushing it. And I don't know if you've uh, read the Gary V book, the new one out, <clears throat> but uh, he has a good point about new frontiers you know, because Facebook used to be the new one and then, you know, Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. Well, well I, I think the flash briefing stuff in the Echo Dot, the thing when, when you have it read you the news, I think that's a cool little gig and I'm going to try to give it a shot. So, uh, you know, like little one minute uh, motivational things in the morning or something. So, you know, what the hell? But it, it brings up a good point. The point is, is that Always keep an eye out for stuff, whatever you're doing or whatever your passion is. Always keep an eye out for like the next thing or kind of an idea of where things are going. And you can kind of jump on the bandwagon and, and experiment and mess around with it. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Anyway, it's great to be back with you. Uh, this uh, week is all going to be about uh, your gut. And I only have one question for you. And that's really the basis of the show this week. The question is, do you trust your gut? So I'm going to go through... You know what it is, and uh, if you don't, then why? And how did you know? We'll go through that fun stuff, but it's all about your gut and your gut instinct. And we're going to talk about that this week. First, let's get to the three good feel news stories of the week. The first one is about a homeless woman who found inspiration to start a brand new path, and she turned her life around within a few short years. <clears throat> and her name is Jennifer Cole in South Carolina. She found herself living in her car. And she didn't have time to think about dreams or goals, obviously, because she was living day to day in her car. Then one day, an older friend decided to go back to school and follow a dream that he had. And that inspired her to kind of think about doing the same thing. I mean, if he can go back and he's older, then why can't she go back and do her own gig, too? So what she did was like and nearly a decade later. So I think it was I think it was about nine years. Right. She uh, went back. She had a uh, she got a full time job. She also went to school full time and and hustled and did her thing like she needed to do to get out of that pattern that she was in. And it, like nearly a decade later, she found herself. She's now a clinical manager and a registered nurse. And twist the really old, really old her old friend that inspired her to do that. They actually got married. So that's, that's kind of a cool story. And just inspiration, inspiration from well, inspiration is from within, but motivation from from him. So good to hear that. The second thing, the, the second story is also from South Carolina, unintended, and it's about a mom and uh, her boy, and her boy that um, that usually would go to school and didn't have any friends. Uh, so for the past four years or so, without fail, sixteen-year-old Andrew Kirby would get the same text from his mom at lunchtime. The text read, "Are you sitting with anyone?" And every time, Kirby gave the same short answer, no. Well, Kirby would sit at a table alone, hoping no one would notice he was by himself as he hid behind his cell phone. And his mom, Kay, prayed daily he would make a new friend. But somehow, she always ended up disappointed. Well, this year, on Kirby's first day back as a junior at Boiling Springs High School in South Carolina, Kay's prayers were answered. Kirby took a seat by himself at lunch table on August the 20th, as usual, and he got a text from his mom asking if he was alone. But this time, to Kay's surprise, Kirby, he didn't answer with a text. Hours later, when she arrived to pick him up, she found out why. He, he ran up to her and he said, Mom, I didn't sit alone and as, she, as he entered the car. And she goes, wow, that's great, uh, before asking about you know, his new friends. So Kirby explained he was sitting by himself at lunch, as usual, when he was approached by four student council members who asked him to join them at his, at, at his table, and he happily agreed. Well, Kay revealed Kirby was adopted. He was born with a crack cocaine addiction and had neurofibromatosis, which is a genetic condition that causes tumors to grow along the nervous system, according to the Mayo Clinic. 
Now, the teen has overcome many health issues in recent years, including major back and neck surgery. So, you know, this guy's dealing, I'm going off off the story, but this guy's dealing with all this health stuff and at the same time is, it has a social issue and stuff. What a shit sandwich this guy has to deal with, right? So his mom says he's, he's had a lot of challenges, but he's bright and he's just different like we all are, right? So Kirby considers himself shy, but once you get to know him, Kay assures people he's far from quiet, which is usually the case with shy people. However, Kay admitted, someone has to make an effort to get to know him, which is why she's thankful that the Boiling High students stepped up finally. We just wanted to say thank you to them for not being afraid to be a friend to someone, she said. I would cry when I would leave him at school, and it gives me peace now, and it helps me feel, uh, it just helps me as a mom to see him with friends. In cases, Kirby now sits with the kids regularly, and he even went to the movie theaters with them on Saturday. And she says he's doing really good. This has given him confidence, and he wants to go to school now. That's all it takes, man. That's all it takes. All it takes is reaching out and being nice, being kind, helping people. Why is that so tough for people? Helping people. Third story, a teacher uh, received a 3 a.m. message from her for- former student and she got, she got up and she drove the former student to a job fair and watched her baby for her. LaShonda Carter always told her students that she'd be there for them if they needed her, and she didn't disappoint when one of them reached out three years later. A former student messaged her on Facebook around 3 a.m. and told her about some recent struggles. She said she really needed to get to a job fair, but had no idea how to make it possible. So Carter immediately stepped in. She made arrangements for her own daughter picked the former student up and held her 18-month-old daughter in the watched her in the car while the her student went in to apply for jobs. After the job fair, Carter took the team mom to apply for a women's infants and children which which is a WIC program. That's that's a, a, a it's a program that assists moms in getting food and nutrition. It, it helps them to get groceries and stuff while while they're getting back on their feet. Sometimes as a teacher, our job goes beyond the classroom, Carter says in her video. And uh, so then Carter set up a GoFundMe page for um, for her former student, and uh, they've raised some money for her. You know, uh, there's a couple things that come up for me on this last one real quick. The first one is you're thinking, well, it's a, I mean, how, would you get, how, how could you get yourself in that predicament, right? I mean, it just you're out and you're a teen mom and you don't have any place to go. You don't have anybody to help you and stuff. And that's you. So you can cast judgment on that, but that's not going to help anybody. And that, I think that's the big point. And the big shift that I made it personally in my own life, because I used to cast judgment on the fact that, well, you got yourself in this own mess, then you can just go screw yourself. But that doesn't help this, this young woman that this teenage mom wanted to do something with herself. She wanted to make life better for her and her and her uh, child. And she and she, then she reached out. She reached out for something that was positive and something that was expansive. She wanted to go be responsible and go and look for a job. That's why I love this, and that's why I wanted to read this one to you because it doesn't have anything to do with uh, being, you know, just some you know, lazy welfare person that's living off the state teat, and uh, and then we can all kind of dis- disparage them for uh, uh, being, you know, lazy and not. Uh, applying anything to helping anybody else right but that's not the case here and i would hope that again i would hope that you guys listening and other people as well as we go on would understand some people some people in this world need help i mean sometimes you do right but most of the time i think if you're listening to this you're in you're you're in pretty good shape you're a little bit ahead of the curve most of the time some people just have made such bad decisions in growing up that they find themselves in terrible predicaments and they just, but then they realize, then they educate themselves. Then they become more aware of what's going on. And then they have, so then they have to deal with the shit in their, in their life. And then they reach out for help. And then we're like slapping their hand away going, now you did it to yourself and go screw yourself. I mean, that makes no, does that make any sense? I mean, maybe it's me. I mean, write me, write to me and tell me if that doesn't make any sense to you. I'm saying. So this week, (laughs) that being said, This week is all about trusting your gut. Uh, uh, I have certain, uh, I have personal stories about this that I'll probably tell you as we go. 
Um, personally, I'm a huge fan of trusting your gut. And and you'll find out why. So what is your gut anyway? A lot of people ask me, you know, I trust your gut. Well, you know, what is it? It's just like feelings and stuff. Well, basically what it is is this. And there is, it's actually a thing. It's been researched. People, you know, neuropsychologists, they, they, everybody knows what this thing is. It's actually a combination. It's a combination of your instincts, which is your caveman, you know, instinctual species, human thing. Your subconscious, which is all the stuff that you actually understand like subconsciously and not consciously and the universal energy that the whole energy about the ties everybody together you know that flow that force it's the force if you don't believe that then you're already behind because i'm trust trust me there's 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 a force and we're all connected right it it's so powerful the the gut the gut feeling the instinctual gut feeling is so powerful because it does connect your body and your mind and your spirit think about it Connects your body, you feel something. Connects your mind, it's a subconscious, and it connects a spirit, which is the the energy. The act, the actual feeling, is the result of the subconscious of your subconscious mind sending signals. I'm talking about the feeling in your gut. Your subconscious mind is sending signals to the millions of nerve cells in your in your abdomen, trying to bring your whole body system into the decision making process. You you have processed this whatever's in front of you as something that's something you really need to work on and it's something that's either a, a, a crisis like a acute crisis like a you know get out of the way of the bus or something that's a big decision and so instead of just using just one part of your person you're you're incorporating all your subconscious wants it everybody on deck and everybody to help you make the decision that's why you feel it in your abdomen because there's millions and millions of of nerve cells down there and that's why you kind of feel it kind of in your gut or maybe when you lose your breath a little bit it's kind of in that in that diaphragm area so why don't you trust your gut because some people don't i mean so maybe you do which is great if you do then great but but we're going to go through maybe some of the things that you think are gut feelings or not so why don't you if you don't why don't you trust your gut well we're actually programmed not to in the western part of the world because over the years we have been more programmed to accept more of the analytical thinking as being more verifiable. You know, analytical being just intellectual research, science stuff, which I'm not bagging on science. I'm 110% behind science. But we have taken that as being something that can override any gut feeling. So if you have, and because you'll, you'll start to think about, well, you know, science doesn't, or well, I didn't, or well, and you'll tar- start to over rationalize it and it will diminish your gut feeling. The, diminish the 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 impact of the gut feeling, so that's that's one way. Uh, another reason is you could have followed a gut feeling in the past that ended up being a terrible decision. And when you have a couple of those, I can see why. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't, right? But the thing is, is that I, I guarantee you, those decisions that ended up horribly wrong, not something that may have ended up uh, bad, but you needed to you know, break the egg to make the omelet, if that makes sense. So if you made a gut decision and, and it ended up being kind of crappy, but then after that it ended up being, oh, that was, now I know why that was the right decision. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the ones where it just ended up being a dumpster fire. And that's and those are the ones that actually, were, I'm going to let you know, those actually weren't really a gut feeling. Those weren't like from your true self gut. That was an ego thing, right? So what happens uh, when you don't trust your gut intuition? So when you don't trust it, you seek, what do you do? If you don't trust yourself and you don't trust your gut, what what typically do you do? You ask for other people's advice. You ask them what they think, which uh, which honestly it could be good or bad. There's nothing wrong with getting input from your friends and family because they sometimes it can be separated from the intense emotional connection uh, that you have on something. So it, it's not a good or bad thing. I'm not saying that, but here's what here's what happens if you do that. If you don't trust yourself, if you don't trust yourself. I always, I always call it, it's kind of like having somebody work out for you. <laughs> so if you're not working on your awareness of that, if you're not working on reading yourself better and understanding yourself better, and then starting to trust, and starting to trust, because really your, your gut is, your true self gut is really like the, the honest to God basic truth in terms of what you should trust. If you don't, then you then that muscle just doesn't you know it's it's like not working out your arms and then they just get to like really skinny instead of working them out and building some muscle up because the more you work out the more you trust your gut the more you you work on being aware of that of that instinct 
and and diving into a little bit and figuring out you know where this is coming from or or you know this is this is a good thing then you're then you just let it go and then you're relying on other people to do your work for you you know rely it's like going to the gym and hiring somebody to lift the weights for you then nothing gets accomplished and in in the long run you're 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 in terrible shape that's the same type of thing so I, i'm going to get into how to follow the right gut instincts now, in order to minimize the ego, because like I said, there, there's a good chance that sometimes your gut instinct can be from two places. It can be really from your true self, your true, honest, you know, the, those feelings that you just you need to believe because it's just it's just your your spoken inner truth. Or it can be from your ego trying to protect you in some way or trying to nurture an ego thing like a narcissist thing or a, you know, or, or you know, you got major FOMO. And then you just you know go with your gut to spend every single dollar that you have to go to Spain because everybody else is. And it was a terrible mistake. That's what I'm saying. So in order to minimize that ego part, you have to you have to familiarize yourself with your with your con, with your cognitive biases ahead of time. What do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. You and this is all about awareness because everything's always about awareness, isn't it? You have to sit back and realize. All of those uh, the past things, all of the, the experiences that you have, they all kind of culminate into how you see things and how you relate to things. So if you've had terrible relationships with, guy, with guys with you know, black hair, uh, then you're going to then you're, you're always going to go into meeting somebody and if the guy has dark hair, then you might then you already might be judging him the wrong way. And that, but but if you recognize the fact that wait I'm coming into this and I don't even know this person and I'm coming into this and I have a feeling about him good good bad or otherwise but in this case it's not good why do I have that and so that's about that's understanding what your cognitive biases are understanding what your programs are what your ego programs are what do you protect yourself against yeah what what do you tend to gravitate towards what what are you usually in the group? Because every group has like an archetype. Every group has a mom. Every group has the party, or every group has the has the the person that that irritates everybody else. Everybody has every group has the flaker. You know how it goes. Every group has their little archetypes thing. So you have to realize where where you're at with all that, and then you have to get really good at interrupting immediately when the gut instinct happens. Now here's where. Here's where it gets really interesting because a lot, if you read about gut instinct, a lot of psychologists, uh, uh, neuro, you know, neuropsychologists, uh, uh, all that, all that, fun, uh, all that fun stuff, they, they tend to think that you should, as a solution to it, you should think, uh, you know, when you have that gut instinct, you should process it uh, cognitively, which means when you have that, just don't go off of that. But now. Once that happens, then you start the process of thinking about it, going, why do I have it? And is this a good idea? And uh, now here's the problem with that. And the, and, the re- and the reason why I split and I don't, I don't agree with 100% with all that. Because when you start to do that, you know who comes out? The ego comes out. The ego comes out and it starts rationalizing why you shouldn't do something. Or why it is a bad idea. Or why it's a great idea. As long as you know your patterns or you get more familiar, you are more aware of what your patterns are coming into it. I'm I'm weak when I see other people in relationships because I really, 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 really want to be in one. And uh, I'm going to rationalize like a mother <laughs> that, that, I, that I should be in one. So if you meet somebody that's just, just ordinary or they have... You already know it's just it, it's a gut feeling that uh, oh, this person's not good. It's just that gut. You're like, uh, but, uh, but that but part is that is the ego coming in because you're thinking, yeah, but I'm the only one that's single here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot. It's, it's a bad idea. It's a bad ass. That's an ego decision. Do you see the difference between the two? That's a decision. So that that's so that's the key. The key is, and again, what you can do is simply this. And I give you I give you this small tool. If you have a gut feeling, and you and you sit there and you interrupt it, hopefully, because that's the awareness. The awareness is the cognitive, the the conscious awareness of, oh, oh, I have a gut feeling, and then you can think to yourself really quick, why? 
if you think to yourself that and immediately ask one question, and the only question I would like you to ask yourself is, is this a need or a want? Is it a need or a want? And and you know the difference? The difference is if this is a want, in the example that I gave of the girl with the boyfriend, you know what? So she's just, so she's the only single one, right? So you think it might be a need? Well, I need to have a boyfriend because everybody else does. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need to have anything like that. You you want another boyfriend because you want a boyfriend because everybody else has one. So that's where you get real with yourself in that immediate second after you have that gut feeling, want or need. Which one is it? That's that's the little tip that I like to give. If it feels a lot of times, if it feels right, but it scares the shit out of you, <laughs> it's a good sign because it means you're hitting your head up against that bubble, that bubble of expansion, that thing that you want to go past, and anything outside of your your little comfort zone is uncomfortable, and so that might happen. Um, when your thinking catches up with your gut, do you start to argue with it? So when your gut, you have a gut feeling, and then you start, and then the, the then you start catching up with it cognitively, and you start thinking about it. Do you think? Yeah, but oh no no! Well, you better shut up. I mean, that that then that's a good sign. It might be an ego thing, a really good sign. So when to follow your gut? Your gut could be telling you to go in a whole other direction. It may want you to make some drastic changes. Should you act on those drastic changes? Yes, if it's a safety thing. Yes, act on them like immediately. Get out of the way, bus of the bus. Uh, no, if it's a um, if it has to do with an ego impulse. Like, uh, well, there's leftover donuts on there and I hate seeing food go to waste. I'm going to eat them. Or, uh, you know, you're, you're hammered and you uh, take a drunken climb up the cliff because everybody else is jumping off the cliff and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Alcohol doesn't help with this decision-making process. I'm just letting you know. I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm just saying. Remember, want versus need. And then you, and then you, you, you should act on it slowly if it has to do with a general life direction. If it's a general life direction, like uh, changing careers, or uh, changing your lifestyle in any like big fashion. Again, remember it's small baby steps. Don't atomic bomb your life on that. The uh, the I'm going to leave you with uh, tools to become more aware. Uh, well, well, the tools to 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 listen to your gut better and to have that as something that you can really rely on. You just have to be more aware of yourself and your patterns. And I see just meditation, meditation or journaling or something, something where you can you can relax and 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 just sit in, just sit in your true self and become more aware and more familiar with really, really, really who you are, not your ego bullshit stuff, but really who you are. So what I would like you to do, my little call to action here at the end is I would like you to take a couple minutes to think about a time when you followed your gut and you were right on. And then I want you to think about a time when you thought you were following your gut, but it didn't go well at all. It ended up not great. And uh, and then I'd like you to take a look at both of those and, and see the want versus the need and see if that makes any sense to you. Uh, if you have any cool of, you know, the stories about that, then write them and share them to me. Or if you believe that uh, you, you shouldn't trust your gut or you should because I always like listening to personal stories. I always ask my my clients uh, for their little personal stories because it's fun because we all have the same personal stories, really different contexts, but we all share the same type of thing. Uh, real quick, uh, my own personal story at the end of this, I was um, with uh, two buddies of mine long, 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 long time ago back in like high school and we went up to Lake Sabrina, which is just by, by Mammoth up in like central North North California. And we went up there to go fishing. It was over Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, put a tent up and all that kind of stuff. And so we went fishing. We went out there and we had, uh, it was me and uh, my buddy Doug, my buddy Dave. And we went out and we're kind of casting in the lake and stuff. And then Doug goes, hey, I'm going to go up the river because there was a river that flowed into Lake Sabrina. And it was a pretty decent sized river flowing because it filled Lake Sabrina up. You know, it's part of the deal. He goes, I'm going to go up the river and, and you know, kind of cast in. See if you can get some fish up there. Oh, fine. So he's rolling up the river, and it's it's a kind of a steep. It comes down to like a pretty. It was like boulders and stuff. And he's kind of climbing up and around. He kind of went out of sight because it was also forest too. There was a lot of pine trees and stuff. And I'm sitting there, and I'm casting with Dave. I'm kind of casting into Sabrina, kind of just relaxing. I didn't want to go up there. And I, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I had this gut instinct that I needed to follow, Doug. But I, I don't. I cannot tell you where it was from. It had nothing to do with me seeing anything having to do with him or whatever. I got this gut feeling that I needed to follow him. 
So I did, and I didn't see him, but then I just start. I go, hey, I'll be right back. And so, and Dave's like, all right. So I went out, and I just started climbing up the rocks, and kind of climbing, and kind of through the little forest thing. And I came up, and I was about, I don't know, 20 yards away from him, and I see him crossing the river on this log. And the, in the log, the water's rushing over the top of the log. So he's crossing the river and kind of teetering, tottering, crossing it. He's about, he's about in the middle of this on this log, and he slipped and he fell on the on the side of the log that was on the not not the side that was going towards the lake but the other side so when he fell that way the the water pressure was keeping him underneath the log cuz he got stuck under there so i so i go oh shit so i ran up there and i couldn't see him when i was running up there so i dropped my pole and stuff i ran up there and by the time i got up there he had pulled himself with his just his head above the water uh, this and this water was roaring and he's like hanging on. And I'm so initially my first instinct was to, you know, grab a tree or something and kind of put it out to him, but he couldn't grab onto it because he was holding on for dear life. And so so then I waded into the water and I'm trying to wade into where I don't get sucked underneath the log too. And I'm wading in and I I grab one of his arms and I'm holding on to it. I'm kinda I'm trying to pull him up, pull him. I got him up a little bit. And I, and he was thinking about letting go and because and, he was telling me let go let go because he wanted to try to see if he can go underneath the log all the way and come out the other side. But I mean, who knows if he would have been able to do that? So all of a sudden, I, I mean, I'm doing this and 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 out of nowhere, Dave, my other buddy, comes racing to my around behind me, comes racing over and goes right onto the other side of Doug, out of nowhere, complete nowhere. Because I didn't say follow me, I didn't say what I was doing or anything to Dave back on, at the lake. I don't know. And so he grabbed one arm and I grabbed the other one, two, three. And we pulled him like with all of our might, pulled him out and got him to the to the uh, edge of the river and uh, and then had to, you know, try to warm him. He was into hypothermia. And then we had to. Had, but anyway, for both Dave and myself, after we t- Doug is fine, actually he turned out to be a doctor. He's a doctor in Texas right now. So, Doug, if you're listening, then hey, um, it it, uh, it was a very profound uh, thing in my life, and it really taught me one thing, and, and that's why I wanted to do the show today. And, and even talking with Dave afterwards, we both completely agreed. This is, this is complete gut instinct, complete, because for some reason, and I do not know why, even in hindsight, 40 years later, 30 some odd years later, I don't know, but yeah, and that's, and that's why I believe in it. And that's why, you know, you should too. So I hope that helps. Again, uh, share your stories with me. I'd love to hear them. <laughs> or do your little, you know, think about it for a few minutes. Have you had a situation where you followed your gut and it worked, and then and, or it turned out well, and the other, and you then you thought you might have followed your gut in another situation and it turned out terrible, and then see the difference in the two. I hope that helps. Again, uh, I would love to hear your stories uh, if you get back to me. It's uh, Tony at javabud.com. That's the easiest possible way. You can go to javabud.com. You can listen to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher if you do listen to it on those. Uh, rating and reviewing helps because there's literally a million podcasts out there, and it always helps if you do that. If you listen, if you see watching this on YouTube, hey, YouTube's starting to kick in for me, which is great. And I appreciate that very much uh, to, to everybody there that's watching it as well. Uh, anything else uh, I've got, you know, you can find my book, you can find, you know, you know, if you go to javabud.com, you can find all my stuff. I've got, I've got 150 podcasts. I've got a whole bunch of videos. I just, it's all free. It just, I'm just doing this to, I'm just doing this because I want to provide value to you. That's it. Uh, of course the book isn't free, but that's a whole different thing. So I hope things are good this week. Let me know if you've got anything that comes that, that's fun that's coming up or if, or if you want me to talk about something in particular on the show. Uh, that is it. I will talk to you later. Bye.